Samantha, Robert. Yes. Can I talk nerdy to you? For Please. Wow. Talk, Sam. Ner- talk nerdy to me. <laughs> Sam, I know you're a big diehard Disney fan. Oh, we're starting with me. Yeah. Are you a big enough diehard Disney fan that you would live and breathe Disney literally? Look, I read 1984. I know mm. the threats of a dystopian future. I still would have lived at Epcot. Yeah. I would have been the first investor if I had the money. <laughs> and so I know what you're about to talk about. And yes, I am in. You're in? Hell yeah. Sam I'm is in. in. Uh, what we're talking about is the Disney company is developing a new planned community for fans, or by the sounds of it, anybody who's tired of living in, living in this reality <sighs> and wants to live out their days in a Disney fabricated, eternally sunny, pristine, family friendly world. Story Living <gasps> by home? Disney which is operating the company's theme park division, uh, is developing a series of master plan communities for residential living that promises a energetic community with the warmth and charm of a small town and the beauty of a resort. One such community has been announced. It's called Cotino, and it'll be built in Rancho Mirage, California, in the Coachella Ooh. Valley. Cotino will have villas, condos, and housing complexes clustered around a 24-acre grand oasis. Amenities include shopping, dining, entertainment, a beachfront hotel, and clubhouse, and Disney programming, entertainment, and activities throughout the year. Disney says the communities will focus on the concept of storytelling, saying that every single element of these communities will be steeped in a story and that residents will be active participants in those stories. Sounds a little like Pleasantville, weird like Mm -hmm. WandaVision to me. Mm -hmm. Very bizarre. Uh, While Disney is branding and marketing these communities, they are partnering with a third party to build and sell the homes. This isn't the first time Disney has explored residential developments, as Sam mentioned. The true vision of Walt Disney's utopian city of the future was never fully realized with Epcot, which by the way, if you didn't know, stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Uh, In 1996, Disney opened Celebration Florida, which was a master plan community near Walt Disney World. 2011, they opened Golden Oak Resort, an upscale residential community on the Walt Disney World Resort property, where homes were originally starting at $1.6 million. Those communities kind of had their share of problems and still do, but that clearly hasn't stopped the company's residential ambitions. Prices for accommodation and financing options for Cotino have not yet been announced, Uh, but they seem really excited about it. Um, I, I think it's an interesting concept. I, it sounds, a, the whole story driven aspect sounds a little weird, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I don't know, maybe it'd be nice. I mean, it, it would probably be living in this reality right now, but I don't know, I imagine. My little... fear is that it'll turn into like the Michael Bluth's um, <laughs> development. development? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I grew up, little Samantha grew up walking distance from where this is planned to be built. Yeah. Out in, it's on the Palm Desert Rancher Mirage border. Mm-hmm. And it's right next to, if anyone's familiar with the area, Sunnyland's estate and Annenberg owned a state where the presidents would go stay, big galas, etc. cetera. Um, I'm just sad because growing up, it felt like every time I'd either go off to school for a year or whatever, there's always some new thing popping up. Even now, every time I go home, it's like there's a new development, there's mm-hmm. a new strip mall or something, which for me takes away the charm of this desert by the way they use joshua tree i'm sure you noticed yeah for the advertising the, there's an element of the joshua tree desert in there yeah nowhere close to this no. not even, like no Does, there are no yuccas anywhere near well you know what disney part i'm sure disney Rush. can find a way i'm sure they will find a way where there's a will <laughs> and disney trees, there is yeah. a way but with all of that said more money in that economy agriculture is the number one uh, money maker for the coachella valley after that is tourism yeah. So I am excited what this means for the locals. Hopefully um, good things come out of it. Yeah. But Spe- I'm still hesitant to see the desert grow. I'm like, no, no yeah, more people. I, I feel you. <laughs> Speaking of tourism, though, they have said that they plan on allowing like visitors to buy day passes to, mm-hmm. enter, the, to enter the resort or community or whatever they're going to call it. Um, and then there will be other areas set aside for um, senior living facilities. And it's like a big old... I saw 55 thing. plus. Yeah, 55 condos, plus. Condos, estates... Yeah. Residential hotel. Yeah. There it is. This is going to be you'll big. You'll never have to leave. You'll <laughs> never have to leave the clutches of Disney. I yeah. love it. Is it? It's in Florida, something Springs. Help me out here. But they have, um, they already have a neighborhood, kind not a whole city like this, but they Ra- have a little Ra- neighborhood where you can Ra- Ra- Radiator Springs. Well, yeah, Radiator yes, Springs. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you might be thinking of Celebration. Is that what I'm thinking? Which is like a like Disney planned art in the neighborhood, <laughs> like Disney art. Like I, I would just yeah. love to drive in and see like manicured right. lawns that have little ears in them. Yeah. I don't know. That's a bell. 
Uh, prepare to boldly go where you've already gone before. Another Star Trek <laughs> film is on the way. Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Zoe Saldana, and the rest of the stars of the J.J. Abrams rebooted franchise are beaming back up for Star Trek IV. Production is set to start by the end of the year with WandaVision's Matt Shackman tapped to direct. This is exciting because it seemed for a while that uh, for the last several years a new Star Trek film wasn't going to happen. Many notable names have tossed around ideas for a new film, including Noah Hawley, who's doing the Fargo TV show. Quentin Tarantino uh, wanted to do an R-rated version. Uh, but that never came to fruition. Oh, but it seems cool. like, yeah, it seems like they finally found a script that everybody is excited about. The crew of the USS Enterprise is getting back together, except one key cast member, if you guys remember, Anton Yelchin, who oh. played Chekhov, tragically passed away in 2016. Abram said at that time the role would not be recast, and it's possible that those sentiments are still in place. But um, Did very I see exciting the boys? to see this. The guy from The Boys, is that? Yes, yeah. Um, who I saw there? Uh, geez, uh, I don't Carl Urban. Oh, okay. Uh, Carl Urban. Which uh, is play, he plays, he plays who? Bones. He plays Bones in oh. uh, the Star Trek films. No, okay. in, in The Boys, though, I'm sorry. Oh, he oh. plays the butcher. I forget. Oh, that's right. Okay, that, that was uh, yes, that was him. Then actually, yeah, precisely. Well, yeah, exciting. I, that's I would watch it just for him. I'm not yeah, a big Star I'm a big Trek fan person, of him so. though. I, I am too. I, yeah, I loved great. Anton. How did you say Yel Yelchin? Anton Yelchin. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Um, Simon so. Pegg will be back as Scotty as well as oh, someone and the whole gang's getting back together. Should be good. I, I kind of like those movies. I think they're fun. Uh, another exciting story with uh, the assist from Robert on this one. The DeLorean is coming back from the future and into the present. <laughs> Yes, the car made famous by Back to the Future is officially back, but this time you won't need a flux capacitor or gasoline for that matter to drive it, because the new version will be electric. The original DMC DeLorean was short-lived. It was only in production between 1981 and 82. The car was out of production and the original DeLorean Motor Company had gone bust before the movie uh, came out in 1985 and made the car iconic. Uh, but because we long for anything old to be made new, fans of the car were treated to this little teaser. Very cool, you saw the iconic gullwing doors there. Uh, the new DeLorean will be produced in the company's new headquarters at Port San Antonio in Texas. It will debut sometime this year. Pretty no, cool. No dollar yeah. sign attached? No no other details, no dollar signs. So you can go to the uh, new DeLorean Motor Company website right now and sign up for like when they officially like announce the stuff where I'm sure they'll kind of show the car in, in earnest and maybe some price points. I don't imagine it'll be cheap, maybe more affordable than a Tesla, but I think because more it's got affordable. that whole, huh? More affordable? More affordable than a Tesla, I think. Ah. It's a, it's a, you think it'll be more expensive than a Tesla? Yeah, just because of the just because of the features it has and stuff, and the fact that uh, well, we don't really know. I guess what Teslas features. also have like the door. The doors would be one feature, right? Because of the way the sure. butterfly doors open up like that. But that, so the, the Tesla Model Y, I believe, does that, and that one is more pricey than the three or the the X, I believe. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing. I mean, I don't know what this car will be decked out with. I think the biggest thing it's got going for it is the nostalgia and the the how iconic it is from the films. Sure. Robert, and you mentioned this too earlier uh, when we were working on this story that the the original DeLorean had some sort, you know, had it issues. Had performance issues. Had performance it, issues. It, it so. wouldn't run right. People yeah. were like, were in the middle of the street with their cars dying on them. You can't have that happen. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm sure they'll work at all those things. Mm -hmm. But if they want to go for the like the classic look, the DeLorean is a bit smaller than your average like sedan. Um, and uh, so I, I don't know. Maybe 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 it'll maybe it'll be more expensive than a Tesla, but I I don't know. When they electrified the Bronco, uh, they completely remodeled it to look different. It looks different. I think the new cool. one, the new the yeah. new Bronco. It looks pretty cool, but it looks different than the original. Yeah. So it begs it begs the question: Will this look different than the original? And if it does, then does that take away from the nostalgic aspect of the car? Yeah. I don't know. You're so. right. I, I liked know. the Broncos. In the renderings and the theory and everything, and then when it I, when I actually saw one, my neighbor at my old house got one. I was like, oh, I don't like it in person as much. It looks cool in the commercials and on the road, and it's kind of kind of reminds me of an Marketing. FJ Cruiser a little bit. Yeah, but then when it finally, 
it's came a, it's very, it's kind of dull. Like, oh. It doesn't have a sharp angle. Like it doesn't yeah. have anything sharp about it. It's yeah, very right. dull. It looks like a yeah. bar of soap almost. So. A bar of soap. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. Maybe we'll get to test drive one as, as yeah. a product. Yeah. Oh, goodness. That'd be cool. 